What's up everybody, it's Soul, and today I'm here to explain to you how to install mods for CK3. I get a lot of comments asking me to do a video like this. Uh, personally, I find the process fairly straightforward, but I understand that for a lot of people this might be your first time modding something, so I'm just going to show you how to do this both on Steam and how to do it manually. So, for example, Steam is really, really easy. All you have to do is go to your community tab, and then on the home page for that game, there will be a little, like, workshop link. You'll just click the workshop, and as you can see, CK3 has a huge workshop, tons of mods to choose from. I'm just going to give you one example, but obviously you could do a bunch of things. So let's just say, so say you wanted to do the Bronze Age Reborn. I'm going to unsubscribe from it, just to show you. So as you can see, it's unsubscribed, it's uninstalled itself. It's about a gig and a half, so make sure you actually have the space for these mods when you're installing them. I'm going to install the mod now. It's updating, it's going. Okay, so the mod is installed, we've just finished. All right, now what I'm going to do next is I'm actually just going to look. Let's just look and see if there's any more Bronze Age mods, just to just to see, just to see. And you can do this with pretty much any game. Let's see. So I'm not seeing anything crazy here. So we'll just do the Bronze Age, and then we'll do one more mod. I'll show you how to put two in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go off screen. I'm going to click my Crusader Kings 3 off my desktop. And now I have this right here. And as you can see, I was already playing the Bronze Age recently. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that I've never played it before. And I'm going to add a new playlist. I'm going to call this one Test. We'll hit create and then we're going to hit add mods. Now what we're going to do now is I'm just going to go and I'm going to find whatever mod I want. I always want Barbershop and I want Bronze Age Reborn. Now some people were asking me how does load order work? You usually, very typically, I like to put the main overhaul mod at the top and then whatever sub mods at the bottom. Better Barbershop in particular will go off of whatever is above it. So say you had for example like, let's just add another mod the where is it so you had the community flavor pack for example this is probably not compatible with this i'm just using this as an example if you have the community flavor pack below better barbershop this will override some features of it particularly the one where you want to use like the big green screen which is what i use for a lot of my videos so typically if i want to use community flavor pack i have to have them flipped now it is a great mod i'm actually kind of curious to see if it'll work so let's just find out we're going to go to our test uh, here in the play tests and i'm just going to hit play and as you can see by the loading screen, it looks like it's working, but we'll go to the actual barbershop itself to prove that everything worked. It's really easy to just drag and drop mods into most games. Most of them are compatible, and if there's compatibility issues, generally the mod makers will let you know beforehand. You should always read the descriptions that are in the mod post, not only so you know what they do, but also so you can know if there's anything you need to have or not have installed to use it correctly. All right, so we're at the main game. We're at the Bronze Age. We're just gonna click, um, we'll play as the King of Ur, We'll just click him, just somebody easy during the Sumerian Revolt. And we're here in the game. We're in, uh, as you can see, the Bronze Age, not CK3. I mean, it is CK3, but it's a modded CK3. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the barber shop by clicking on him, going like this. And it looks to me, ah, uh, yep. So stuff like this is actually from the Community Flavor Pack right here. If you go to Clothing, it actually breaks it down even more. So let's just see. I'll scroll down here for a second. And yeah, you can see stuff like this plate armor. Obviously, this wouldn't really work for the context of the Bronze Age, but if you wanted to use the Community Flavor Pack, which I do recommend because it's very good, uh, you can do that through here. And because I have it, I have the Better Barbershop below the Community Flavor Pack, I can go into this thing called Scene 2, and if I wanted to record like a green screen, I could do that. If I wanted to make it black, which I often do to take pictures for thumbnails, I could do that. I can change the background if I like to, which the Community Flavor Pack also adds some new backgrounds. Not a ton, but there's a couple. And you can sort of set up your own scenes here. Say you wanted to make your own thumbnail, you could do it like that. Um, so that's how to basically install mods. There's one other part for the Steam thing, because sometimes mods are a little out of date with the current version of Steam. So I'm going to tell you how to do that. I'm going to go back really fast, though. Say you're like, okay, I don't really want to use that playlist anymore. Let's just open up the playlists. Like, th this, is your, so this is your playlist window. What you can do if you don't want this anymore, you can just delete it. So say you wanted to, for example, play a mod like Elder Kings 2. It hasn't been updated since February 26th. It's been a little while. That's totally fine. People do this stuff for free. Don't freak out. You can still play the mod. However, you are going to have to look at what is the compatibility version. No DLC required, all DLC supported. Current compatibility with DLC 1.115. So if you wanted to put your game on 1.115, you will right click this, you're gonna hit properties, and you're gonna go into here, and it's gonna give you this general screen. And you can also like uh, activate the debug mode if you wanted to by going like this. If you wanted to activate debug mode um, ever in your game, that's the way to do it in case you were curious. Um, but you're gonna go to betas, and you're gonna find whatever version the game is running on. They said 1.115, so you'll just click this. I'm not going to because I don't wanna play on that, but that's how you do it. And you can do that for pretty much any mod. 
um, in any version of the game. There's a ton of them. Uh, it's obviously running on a little bit of an older version. As you can see, there's quite a few in between that. But that is how you do that. Now I'm going to explain to you how to manually install mods, which is also very easy but it's a little bit more involved in some respects. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna use ModDB. You can use the Paradox Plaza, you can use Nexus. All of these will be exactly the same. Um, let's just download a total conversion mod again. Let's do Princess of Darkness. Let's see what version this is on. It looks like it has updated on May 15th, 2024. And someone's even asking the question right here, how do I do this? I don't know how to do this, I need help. That's totally fine, that's what I'm here for. So you're gonna go to the files of this and you're gonna hit file version. You're gonna click Princess of Darkness and you are going to click download now. Now, it's important to notice that um, ModDB is a little bit all over the place when it comes to its windows. This is the, the thing you're supposed to click. Um, you can also just click the download the zip again. And what this zip file means is that you're going to need a extracting tool. Now I recommend 7-Zip, it's free, it's open source. Really easy to use, really easy to install. I put it on every computer that I do anything with. Um, I'm gonna put a link to this in the description. It's very straightforward. So as you can see, I've got it, I've got it zoomed way in here <laughs> so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to extract it. As you can see, 7-Zip right here. I'm just gonna click Extract right here. And now as you can see, out of that, I've gotten these two files and I'm gonna open a folder. I'm gonna call this one Test, just, just for the video's purposes, but we'll drop them in here. Okay, so I've extracted my Princess of Darkness zip file into a folder. I have these two files. Now what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna drag and drop them into my Paradox. As you can see, it's for this PC, Documents, Paradox Interactive, Crusader Kings 3, Mod. You can pretty much just type that in if you wanted to. So I've dragged and dropped those over. Now, something you're gonna have to know is that, for example, on this Ambinar Dev one, you're gonna have to open this with a notepad and make sure the path is correct right here. I have part of this blurred out because it has my name, but it's gonna be like users, your name, OneDrive, documents, whatever, and it'll lead you to the right path. So if I go into the Princess of Darkness one, it apparently is not my name, it's whoever the, the person was that used this before who is a, uh, evidently Flint. So I'm gonna have to change this to be my name so that it actually pops up. I'm gonna do that really fast. Now if we go in here to the playlist, we're gonna go to add mods. We're gonna scroll down and as you can see, we should have Princess of Darkness. Now we'll just add that to the playset and we'll go back to the home screen and then we'll scroll down to test and we'll just see if this worked. So I loaded up the game. As you can see, it is not working. This is good because now you can see that perhaps something is wrong. So it wasn't working, right? So I've come back to the screen. The only thing I can think of is that perhaps inside of this folder, there is an additional mod file that has the exact same name as the other one. I have changed it to match the other description and I'm going to test this. Sometimes mods are a little bit temperamental and sometimes they don't wanna work. So we're just gonna see if this fixes it. It may not. Okay, so that did not work either. Now, at this point, you may be getting frustrated and you may be wanting to give up and that's okay. So one thing I've tried now is I've gone to the Princess of Darkness and I've unsubscribed from it. I don't know why that would maybe work. I'm going to re-enable this and then we're just gonna see. And there you have it. Apparently the issue was not that we had installed that incorrectly. Obviously we did. The issue was that we had one installed on Steam and one installed manually. So they were overlapping each other and were not opening, which is kind of frustrating, but those things happen. I kind of wanted to include something like that in the video. So I was sort of hoping that we'd run into that problem, but obviously it's not something you want to happen every time and it can lead to a lot of people quitting and not wanting to go further. We're just gonna click a character. We'll hit Mithras here in the British Isles. And as you can see, we are here in the map. Beautiful, beautiful map. Absolutely wonderful mod here in Princess of Darkness if you've never played it. But that is how you install mods both via Steam and manually. And I hope this helps you out. I hope that it was fairly straightforward. Again, as a re-summarizing of this part, just because it was maybe all over the place, you're going to extract this with 7-Zip. You're just gonna do this, go there, extract it. You're gonna get the two files. You're gonna open those up and you're gonna drag them over to here you're going to make sure that the file path, when you open this with a notepad, actually says what file path this is. So you're just gonna open up Princess of Darkness, copy the file path, paste it right into here, make sure there's uh, quotation marks around it, and then it should work. Sometimes they don't check around, mess around. Sometimes you'll have to take, like what I did is I took out the mod descriptor file. There was a second one in here and I actually just copied it and made it exactly the same as this one. So sometimes, these and i'll even show you i'll just do it again sometimes these mod files that you get are a little redundant because if you go into the folder itself it'll already have one that you can technically use because it should if i go to another one as an example which i know works it should just have one descriptor file it should not have an additional mod file so i would take this one and do exactly what i showed you but do it with this one add the file path you can even just because this one will already have the path set up so if i was going to go here go to notepad you can copy this change it to your username and then it should work in the other one 
but hopefully that helps you out. Hopefully this was fairly straightforward. Hopefully now you're well on your way to modding CK3 for yourself, either through Steam or manually. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I tried to make this as simple and comprehensive as I could, but of, of course, you know, I can get all over the place. It just happens. And also, you know, things go wrong as they did in this video. And I wanted to show you that. So if something goes wrong for you and you have a question, please feel free to comment. I or somebody else should be able to assist you from there. But that's going to be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Soul. This has been How to Mod Crusader Kings 3 for Beginners. And I will happily see you in the next one.